Good morning. I'm here to talk about Anacostia, which is my love and my vocation. For too long, Anacostia has had plans. The government for 30 years, private institutions, have developed plans for Anacostia, grandiose plans. And what's happened? It still has the highest unemployment rate in the District of Columbia. It has, still has the most substandard housing. It still has the highest dropout rate. It has the lowest percentage of retail stores in all of the Northeast. It has the lowest commercial development, and 30% of its storefronts are still, on its main street, are vacant. There's sort of a chicken and egg problem in Anacostia. From a perspective of bringing middle-income people, homeowners, and commercial investors into Anacostia, there's not enough disposable income to support those businesses. And on the other hand, potential home buyers and middle-class people who, or an upper-class people who want to move in Anacostia don't see the normal retail sector that they need to move in. But there is a solution. And the lead-in from both Harriet and the last speaker really was perfect because arts and culture and the creative economy can be employed as a means to regenerate Anacostia. This is not a pie in the sky area. It has been done in Swansea, Wales. It's been done in Liverpool. It has been done in St. Petersburg, Russia. And interesting enough, most likely the perfect examples of it is Chelsea and Soho in New York City. That properly organized facilities and a plan and a development of programs that attract artists, art groups, cultural groups, and the creative economy can be an engine for neighborhood revitalization. And this approach has a number of benefits. It can nourish the spiritual and creative energies to allow individuals to regenerate themselves. It also can bridge the many differences that divide the residents of Anacostia, which are age, gender, income, race, and ethnicity. And arts and culture and the small gal approach to this development is compatible with almost any other development. It is not a gentrification movement. It does not in itself promote gentrification. Arch does not have an edifice complex. We're not interested in building large office buildings, but it's compatible with that. If developers wanted to build office buildings, and we do have a number of them, including a new one across the street from our first gallery, it's compatible with that. If someone wants to bring in light industry, it's compatible with that. What are the features of Anacostia that make this ideal, as an ideal laboratory and an ideal place to do this? First of all, it has beautiful houses. For those of you who do not know Anacostia, and Anacostia is not everything east of the river, by the way. That's the Washington Post's definition of Anacostia. If there's a crime somewhere, anywhere east of the river, oh, it's got to be in Anacostia. Anacostia is a relatively small community. It basically is from the river to Minnesota Avenue, and then from Route Good Hope Road up to the metro station. And that is the area that I'm talking about. And if you walk those neighborhoods, you will see beautiful, beautiful houses. And these houses started as working class houses, some of them from after the Civil War, some of them from the 1920s. It also has an ideal location. I can get from my office in Anacostia to K Street in 10 minutes quicker than you can get from Adams to Morgan to K Street. It has great access up 295. With its new bridges, 11th Street Bridge coming in, there'll also be a direct access to Capitol Hill. It has a great waterfront. It's a great place to walk. I take my dog often to my office, and at lunchtime, I walk in Anacostia Park. It has a beautiful park that also can be used for arts and cultures. In fact, a jazz fest is going to be there at the end of the, of the month. It has local museums. It has the Anacostia Museum, which is part of the Smithsonian. It has the Frederick Douglass House. It also has, as I said, one of its disadvantages is it has vacant storefronts. But its great advantage, it has vacant storefronts, where small art groups, small retail businesses to support the artists can come in, restaurants, and galleries. It has a warehouse district where green industries can make their headquarters. 
And in fact, we have maybe a green industry that just moved in, which is General Dynamics. They might green a different way, but they just moved in. They made their headquarters in Anacostia. And you say, well, is this really feasible? I mean, can you do this in Anacostia? Let me give you a little idea of progress in trade. In, in 2007, we opened the on-floor gallery. And people thought we were absolutely crazy. If you come to the on-floor gallery, people say, why did you make it so luxurious? It has nothing to do with luxurious. Our gallery and any gallery you pr produce in Anacostia must meet the standards in New York City or in London. When we came, people, no one will ever come, or just residents, local residents will come to Anacostia and visit this. When we have an opening now, we have between 200 and 250 people. And in the beginning, it was maybe 50, 60 percent local residents. Now, depending upon the artist, it's between 30 and 35 percent east of the river individuals, maybe another 30 percent from the district. But the key is we have between 35 and 40 percent of the people coming from the suburbs, from New York, depending upon the artist. We never have less than 40 percent of the 35, 40 percent of the people coming from outside of our area. So it does work. You need to make Anacostia a point of destination, and that is our goal. We then opened the gallery at Vivid Solutions. Why two galleries? Because we had local artists, we had international artists who said, we want to show here. We want to show in Anacostia. We understand what you're doing. So we, out of necessity, opened a second gallery, which is basically designated to photography. Well, what came from that? Well, local photographers said, you know, there's a lot of places that are going out of business that can't print our work anymore. So we opened a print gallery, which now services maybe 30 to 40 local DC metropolitan artists. From that came, well, there's a lot of people that want to show. There's a lot of artists, there's a lot of art groups that don't have the wherewithal to also have a gallery. So we opened up a gallery, which is called Blank Space, where someone from a very reasonable rate can rent from one weekend to six weeks. Is it feasible? Absolutely. One of our first exhibitions was from the Azerbaijan Embassy. They came, they had an opening in Anacostia. But before there was us, there was a private sector woman who opened the Anacostia Art Gallery up by the Smithsonian. She was the forerunner of this. This was not an idea that Arch developed. This woman who I've met with before we did, did this project, she had the vision. She had a vision that said, I can make a business out of this, and she does. We've now produced some artist housing. In fact, in the audience is three artists from Northern Ireland. We have an exchange program, I think Fred talked about a little bit, where we trade artists. We have artists that come from Northern Ireland. In fact, we had a young man who learned photography at our gallery who went on to exhibit his work both in Paris and in Northern Ireland. So we, as the last speaker said, we help local artists display their work, not only within our own community, but overseas. We also opened what was called the Hive. And this was the result of meetings with local residents who said, we're young professionals, we need we're developing our own business. We need a business incubator here. We don't want to go downtown. We don't want to go to uh, Virginia to have a shared office space. So with support from the district government, we we're able to open the hive. And what has happened since 2007? Anacostia had not had a sit-down restaurant since the early 1960s. There was not a coffee shop. The Big Chair Coffee opened. And then we had the Union Town Bar and Grill. And on a Friday night, when we have an opening at our galleries, you go there afterwards, you will not get a seat. There'll be people on the streets. This is supporting that. And so you will slowly have people coming to your community to see art venues. Those art venues then will spur local, local businesses. The one thing I need to mention is Anacostia is very easy to get to. It's got the metro station. It's got the bus line. Obviously now has the bike share. 
So Anacostia, and this idea of using arts and culture, is something that's happening now. And I wish that all of you would take a walk. And I want you to do it on April 14th, when the Illuminate Festival will be there. There will be 36 artists and performing groups on April 14th performing in Anacostia, in these vacant buildings, in an old police warehouse. It will show the vibrant arts community in the district. Of those 35 artists, 25 of them are from east of the river. So we grow artists. Please promote the arts. Thank you.